All right, we're going we're going to get started. Uh, excited to be with you today. This is Canyon Two Bite Size PD. Those thirty minute shorts PDs that uh, you can use and uh, hopefully uh, implement uh, some things in your classroom. So excited to be with you today. This is increasing classroom learning through video observation. Uh, I don't have anybody in the chat right now, but if you get there, you can always put what is your favorite Valentine candy. We're almost to Valentine's Day, so I know everybody's excited about those little sugary hearts that have words on them. So, um, yeah, excited to be with you today. We'll keep moving. Uh, hit record. We're good to go on that. This is recording. And again, this is increasing classroom learning through video observation. My name is Andrew Jones. I am a specialist in an instructional supports department. Uh, I specifically primarily work with high school science teachers and the high school science lead in the district, but I also support the coaching team and work with instructional coaches in secondary schools and middle schools and high schools. So again, you are in the right place if you are looking for increasing classroom learning through video observations. So excited to be uh, bringing this to you today. A few professional development norms. You should have seen these before if you've been in the district, but we are committed, we're responsible, respectful, and we are safe. So I would encourage you to just look at one of those uh, today and pick the one that you want to focus on. But those are our professional development norms as a district. For Zoom specifically, if you can mute your microphone, turn your camera on if you're comfortable doing that. Um, and if you have a comment or a question, just leave it in the chat. So I have that up on uh, my other monitor and I can um, I can respond to that. OK, super. Uh, if you've been in our district for any amount of time, you've also seen this, our framework, our CSD framework. This kind of puts together and summarizes everything that we care about as a district on one page. Our font gets smaller and smaller by year, but uh, it is kind of our go-to document. So usually one of these columns is circled of what we're going to be covering today, but the beauty of video observation is that, guess what? We can look at a lot of these tier system of support with video coaching or video reflection. So you're certainly going to be able to look at the instructional priorities, whether they be academic or behavior related. You can look at teacher and uh, team learning data. You can look at student performance data. You can do a whole lot with video uh, that fits into this framework. Okay, our learning intentions and success criteria, which come from the framework, uh, something our teacher clarity piece is something we put on every piece of professional development we do, and we hope that you're doing this in the classroom as well, making sure students know what they're trying or supposed to get out of the lesson. And then our success criteria, what it would look like, how they know that they're successful uh, when they've mastered the learning intention. So today we're going to be looking at video observation and how it can be used to improve uh, your instruction in the classroom. Um, again, we can look at this from a lot of different angles and we'll talk about that, but that is our overall learning intention. And you'll know you're successful when you can explain why video is such a powerful tool for reflection and uh, some of the tools that you can use to begin this journey of video observation and reflection. Okay, so that is where we're going today. Okay, so some resources. All of these are hyperlinked in here. If you scroll over, uh, each one of these pictures has a hyperlink on it. I won't spend too much time on these, but some resources that will help you with video coaching. Those first two are books by Jim Knight, who is an instructional coaching specialist. But if you really want to dive deep into some of what we're talking about, any of those works would be good. But where I would point you first and foremost is to the Canyons U picture right here. <clears throat> Canyons U is going to have a good baseline of what video coaching looks like, some tools to help you implement it. 
and just uh, it's a great starter place that's going to take you to our canvas page that has all of our kind of instructional materials, uh, some tech tools we use. Uh, Canyon's U is the place to start. We'll talk about Swivel a little bit. We'll talk about Video Ant software, and we'll talk about TeachFX a little bit at the end, depending on our time. So moving on. All right. Uh, structured classroom discussion. Uh, we know discourse is really important in classrooms. We want to get students talking. Uh, and even in our professional developments, we want you all to talk about things. This is how we learn things uh, and how we better understand each other through talk. So uh, I don't have any people in the PD right now, so we are going to skip this. But I would have you think about have you used video before as a teacher? Or if you're in here as an instructional coach, have you used video to watch yourself, to reflect on your practice? And if you have, what do you think about it? What have been your impressions, pros, cons? Uh, what kind of things have you run into in doing that? If you haven't used your video, if you haven't used video before, Generally, people have some reasons why they haven't, maybe some reservations, or maybe you've never even thought of using video as a means to improve your instructional practice. Uh, but you can also think through that. Um, what are some of my reservations for using video? Uh, so take a few minutes and dwell on that and kind of keep that in your back of your mind as we go through this PD. All right, so video is powerful. I have some other slides here. There they are. It's yeah, I know. How did it go? Uh, sorry about that. So uh, video is really powerful. This is kind of my first why on uh, why should we care about video? Uh, why should we use it to improve our instructional practices? Well, the first thing I would say is that video uh, is a disruptive technology, right? Think of where we are in 2023 that each of us can just grab this from our back pockets, press one button and you are filming, right? With a really high quality HD picture. Uh, what did that look like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, right? So you probably should be envisioning somebody with a camera on their shoulder and massive VHS tapes. It was really tough uh, to video people years ago. It took a lot of money to buy those uh, really expensive items and, uh, we have now just moved into a society where it is really easy uh, to video people for the good or the bad. So video is disruptive technology, right? It can it can change things really quickly. And we all know stories of these. I put a few videos where uh, we're glad that these parents caught these funny things. Uh, Charlie bit my finger or David after the dentist because we had video in our back pocket. We get something that now there's millions upon millions of views on there. So video is disruptive. Uh, video is also reality. And this is a really important one, especially as we reflect on our own practice. Um, the best way to see something uh, is through video because we can sit down, take a second, and we actually see what's happening, right? So what you're seeing is what you get with video. Uh, I played football in college back in the day, and my coach would always tell me, the eye in the sky don't lie. Not the best grammar, but a very true statement. What you see is what you get. So people all over the world are now using video for observation, for reflection, to get better at whatever they want to get better at, whether it be sports players, whether it be lawyers or doctors or nurses. Uh, we can all improve when we see ourselves on video and say, oh, maybe uh, I didn't do that so well. Or man, that was really awesome. Uh, I did a good job catching a touchdown pass or uh, implementing this lesson or giving feedback from a student, right? So uh, we'll talk a little bit in a second, though. Uh, expectations don't always meet reality, right? And I have our nailed it uh, type uh, picture right here. We may think we look like something on video, but in reality, it may not be exactly what we were thinking. So we want to keep that in mind. 
online and we want to be very gentle with ourselves in getting into uh, video reflection because it is powerful. And at first we may not see exactly what we want, but there's always going to be good stuff we can pick out. But there's also be going to be things we can uh, give ourselves and others feedback on. So video is a really powerful technology. Uh, moving on, hopefully, here we go. So, okay, Andrew, if people, uh, if video is so powerful, why don't people always use it? Why don't they love it? Why aren't people lining up to get themselves videoed? Well, I told you one thing, right? Um, you know, we're uncomfortable when we see ourselves on video. So we'll talk about this as we talk about getting started with video, but you're going to have to take some time and realize, oh man, my voice doesn't sound good on video. It's okay. I don't like the way I look on video. It's okay. Yeah. Um, it takes a few minutes to kind of get past that. Imagine me, uh, a hillbilly from Kentucky. Anytime I hear myself on video or audio, I'm kind of horrified, but you get over it and realize it is a great tool to better yourself, better your instructional practices. I would also say there are, there's a few other reasons why specifically teachers don't use it. Um, teachers are busy people, right? Uh, you may be sitting here as a teacher or as an instructional coach, and you say, I just don't have time to reflect on my practices. Uh, how can I reflect on my instruction as I'm sitting there teaching? You can't. Teachers have IEPs, they have uh, classroom management they have to deal with, they have differentiation, they have uh, OTRs, they have engagement. There's no way you can sit down in the middle of a class or even just for a second think about, hmm, how was that lesson? Or how did I uh, just give feedback to that student? There's no way. We're busy people uh, and it's just not going to happen. So video gives a way around that. It allows us to sit down outside of the classroom and see what happened. Video, video also uh, cuts through what we call habituation, right? So that's your uh, $64,000 word of the day. And that is uh, losing sensitivity to anything we experience repeatedly. We all experience this in life. Uh, I'm from Utah, or excuse me, I'm not from Utah. I moved to Utah about nine years ago. And I always ask people about the mountains, like, don't you love the mountains? And I run into a lot of people that are like, ah, I've lived here my whole life and I kind of forget they're up there. Well, me from Kentucky who have no mountains, uh, that kind of blows my mind. Uh, but we all experience this with uh, eating a burger or chips, right? Any great food that we have, that first bite is amazing. But what happens? Second bite, third bite, fourth bite, it's not as good. And by the end of it, we're like, get this out of my face. So habituation, what we experience repeatedly, we uh, kind of lose sensitivity to. So I think this happens within the classroom as well. We forget about the joy of the work. Uh, we stop seeing when students aren't learning or maybe when our practices aren't as sharp as they could be. Uh, it happens to all of us in any area of life. And then finally, I would say confirmation bias, right? Uh, our normal habit in life is to develop a quick belief about a situation and then seek out information that bolsters that belief, uh, meaning we don't always get a clear picture of reality. We may say that uh, since seven students are proficient, uh, that that's evidence that all students in the class are learning, right? We have a confirmation bias to how we do things, um, to what our instruction looks like. To everything we do, we say, ah, yeah, that was a pretty good lesson, when in reality, it may not have been. And it even happens the other way. We may say that was a terrible lesson, but when we look at the video and actually dive into it, we'll see some really powerful parts. So video cuts through habituation. Video cuts through that confirmation bias, right? It is black and white. What you see is what you get. Uh, and I really like this quote, it says, to confront reality is to recognize the, the world as it is, not as you wish it to be, and have the courage to do what must be done and not what you'd like to do. So video allows us and makes us sometimes see some hard things, but that also gives us the means uh, we need and able, uh, and able to uh, us improve our instruction. All right, so moving on. 
Okay, uh, the impact cycle, actually getting into what video coaching looks like. So the impact cycle is probably something as a teacher you're not familiar with, unless you've done some instructional coaching and worked with your instructional coach. But this is uh, what we use as instructional coaches to really think through how we want to coach. And you see at the center of everything is student outcomes, right? That's what everything is based off of, whether we're looking at this as a instructional coach or as a teacher, we care about student outcomes. So what we're going to look at uh, through video is this cycle of call identify, learn, and improve. Identify, learn, and improve. And you're going to see there's different kind of subsections of each of these. Identifying is just going to be that getting that current picture of reality, looking at video, uh, setting a goal on what you want to talk about and study. Um, and then as we move on to the learn phase, uh, we'll uh, try to kind of improve our instruction by the video and figure out what we need to get better uh, using some tools, checklist models, and so on. And then finally, the improve section. We'll uh, refilm ourselves on this video, and then we'll confirm uh, what maybe we've already seen. We'll have some time to review and then adjust and plan likewise, right? So this is a cycle. It never stops. Um, we're always going to be improving in our instruction, uh, and this is just a good kind of framework to look at to allow us to do that. So the next slide will just be this in a bit more depth, and we'll talk about each piece of this. Okay, so uh, I've mentioned instructional coaching a lot. I want to really encourage you, especially if you're a classroom teacher, to make sure your instructional coach is a part of this. Um, that's tough, right? Because uh, it takes a bit more vulnerability to have somebody else watch you on video. Uh, but I would highly encourage you to bring in someone else who you trust, who you have rapport with. It doesn't have to be a coach, but coaches in our district are trained on video. They're trained in this learning cycle, this identify, learn, and improve. And they're trained in uh, instructional pedagogy to help you improve your teaching practices with evidence-based teaching practices. So uh, bring them in on this. They're trained on video. They can help you a lot. Okay, so let's start with identify. Very simple. First thing you're going to do is you are going to film yourself. We're going to talk about some of the ins and outs of that in a second, but this is where your coach can help. Come in your room. They will set up a phone or an iPad, uh, and they'll simply film the class for 10 to 20 minutes. Not very long. Um, and notice all these have resources here, so you can click on all these. Um, but if you allow your coach to come in as well, they can do a majority of the work. You can sit back and teach and they can film and do everything, all the logistical things that need to be done. Okay, so you are going to look at that initial clip. You're going to, again, have to be vulnerable with yourself and realize I don't like the way I sound. I don't, I may not like the way I look, but I'm going to move forward. So take a few minutes and get used to that. And then as you look at it, as you watch yourself in that 10 to 20 minute clip, see what's happening there. Watch yourself, watch your students. You're going to find something that you probably don't love, and that's going to allow you to set a goal. And going back to student outcomes, how can we set a goal that works on student outcomes that is really focusing on that? So maybe it's more feedback cycles. Maybe it's uh, increased engagement. Maybe it's more uh, discourse, students talking with each other, uh, more student talk time and less teacher talk time. Whatever you come uh, to with your coach or just by yourself, uh, it want, you want to be focused on student outcomes. And then choose a strategy. So where do I get a strategy? Well, our uh, instructional guides, curriculum maps are a great place to get some strategies for evidence-based teaching. So if you wanna talk about discourse or wanna focus on discourse, go to the instructional guides. I also would suggest uh, Teach Like a Champion or a similar book that has good evidence-based teaching practices in there uh, to think through, hey, this could be a tool I wanna use to, again, improve student outcomes. Okay, so that is the first part. 
second part is your learn, the second part of the cycle. This is, again, where coaches are really helpful. Uh, coaches have a lot of resources as far as getting you there and taking something like Teach Like a Champion or other resources or instructional guide and teaching you what it looks like to uh, implement that practice. So uh, the coach could model this perhaps, either just in your room with you two. Uh, the coach could model it in the classroom. The coach could co-teach with you. You could do a whole lot of things here to think through, okay, what is it actually going to look like for me to implement this strategy that I chose? All right. So after you do that, you probably know what's next. You're going to record again using the new strategy, right? You're going to implement that. It should be, again, short video, somewhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Don't record a whole class. Don't stress yourself out. Record yourself using the new strategy. And then we're back again to almost the start and proof phase. You're going to sit down with your coach, hopefully, and said, did you hit your goal, right? Uh, do you like what you saw? Um, did you want to increase OTRs uh, by uh, maybe 80%? Did you want to increase engagement? Did you want uh, teacher talk and student talk to have different ratios? Did you want more student talk and less teacher talk? Did you hit your goal? Uh, and then I've given you a lot of other resources down here that says, okay, uh, maybe next time uh, I, I want to revisit the same goal uh, or I want to choose a different strategy. And there's a lot of areas, a lot of resources that you can use to do that. So this is a sheet called Watch Yourself or Watch Your Students. And it just gives a list of things that I could be of watching for yourself uh, in your teaching practices or watching what your students are doing. Uh, and then you'll adjust your plan and uh, start again if that's what you have in mind. I really like this from the Jim Knight book I mentioned. So do you want to continue in the practice and the process? Do you want to choose a new goal or do you want to take a break for a bit? Um, and that kind of walks you through what it would look like to uh, continue or stop in the process. Okay, so uh, I wanted to introduce you to a few tools that will help you do this. I've said this a million times, but coaches are uh, uh, very are trained very well in using a lot of these resources. Swivel is one, hopefully, that you've heard of if you've been in the district for any amount of time. We have swivels uh, in every school, multiple in a lot of schools, and it's simply a device that kind of acts as a robot that you put an iPad or an iPhone on and allows you to film the class. Uh, it will swivel and kind of follow you as the teacher. Uh, there's multiple microphones in there that allows you to put a microphone on yourself, not a microphone, but a recording device uh, and also around the different tables and allows you to pick up that audio of the class. Uh, so that's kind of the front end, but I also like that Swivel has uh, kind of a back end process. So if you look at this picture right here, it shows you kind of the dashboard of Swivel. You can go in Swivel, look at your video, and you can start commenting on it. Maybe you had a great feedback cycle with the student. You can go in and say feedback cycle, and it will timestamp that, and you can click on that, and it's going to take you to that exact spot in the video. Uh, it's also really easy to upload videos. It doesn't take up storage on your phone and it uploads immediately to the cloud. And you can get a free account on that. You can also get a paid account that has a bit more uh, features there. But Swivel is a great way to get started with this. Really easy. Uh, I put a short video of me on Swivel and then I put a link up here to, again, take you to Canyons U. Canyons U has everything you need to get started on Swivel. Okay, um, video ants, similar to Swivel, but free. Uh, Swivel is also free for their base account, but video ants is really cool as well. Uh, if you decide to just upload a YouTube video, just a regular video of you teaching, Video Ant does very similar to what Swivel does in the back end, but like I said, it's free. It will allow you and someone else, if you want, a coach, whoever has the link to go in here and to make notes on your teaching. And notice it timestamps them all. So if I click on that, it will take me to wherever it was in the video that I made that 
um, that's annotation or comments. And uh, you can look and see that it is uh, broken down by however you want to label that. So a really helpful tool. All of these pictures in my slideshow are hyperlinked, so you can click on those and it will take you to uh, whatever the website is. So Video Ant's really cool software. Uh, the final software I'll mention is TeachFX. TeachFX is a paid um, subscription, but they do try to reel you in and give you a few uh, kind of uh, model lessons and give you a few trial runs, if you will. But TeachFX isn't the video part. So I've been talking about video coaching, but I'm also really just passionate about uh, discourse, of teacher discourse and the facilitation of rigorous discourse in classrooms. Uh, and TeachFX does that. TeachFX works through your phone. It's an app. And all you do is simply open their app, press record, and it's going to record however much you want it to. And through AI software, it's going to spit out a lot of different points of data. I've just put two up here, but it puts word clouds spoken by the teacher and by the student. Uh, it gives you those talk ratios that I've already mentioned. So how much the teacher is talking, how much the students are talking, group talking, silence, and about 15 other data points that you can go through and think through and reflect on specifically what a discourse, what a discussion look like in your classroom today. So again, a little different than video observation because there's no video, but this is the audio part and it does the work for you. Uh, it uh, records the class, spits out a transcript, is a really, really slick software that allows you to reflect on your practice. And my favorite thing about it is every piece of data it gives you, it's got a reflection piece, as you can see. Questions that are already there. Did your vocab today reflect your objectives for the lesson? Uh, did your ratios reflect your engagement goals for the lesson? So did you want to talk, as you see in this one, for 50% of the time? Uh, or did you uh, have a different goal in mind? So TeachFX is a really slick software that allows you to, again, reflect on our teaching practices, because that's our ultimate goal. Okay, super. So uh, we are about at time. Uh, if you have a second uh, on this Jamboard, you can uh, put a quick note on there of just one takeaway that you have from this session. And then I'd also uh, push you and ask you to answer that next question of what next step are you going to take to implement video observation? That could be reaching out to a coach at your school uh, that could be downloading Swivel or TeachFX or one of the softwares. Uh, it could be filming yourself and sitting with yourself and that video recording for 10 or 15 minutes uh, and being vulnerable and saying, how do I want to improve my practice? So again, that's uh, that's the reason I love video observation. As I said, it's, it's, it's a little tough up front to get used to it, but there is no better way in my mind to reflect on your practice and to reflect on your instruction in the classroom and see, man, here's an area that I really need to improve, but also see successes in your class, see successes in your instruction and with your own students. Here's stuff I'm doing really well. Um, so I think video is a great means to do that. So thank you for uh, watching this. Thank you for being uh, with us today. Feel free to always uh, reach out again to your instructional coach or to any of the specialists in ISD. My name's Andrew Jones. Uh, you can find me somewhere uh, on the Canyons website, I'm sure. Uh, but I'd love to help you get started with video and point you in the right direction. Thanks. Have a great day.